guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you're new here, my name is Jess. I'm an electrical apprentice here in Ontario. Um, I realized I haven't been saying that in my previous videos, which is why people were confused why I was showing a wire stripping video or a bunch of pan tools. So if you don't know, you do now. Um, thanks for coming back. If you're a subscriber, I appreciate the support. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the code book and how to read the CEC, which is the Canadian Electrical Code Book. This one's really old, it's 2012. I got this one from a previous foreman of mine before I went to level one trade school. So, so he gave it to me just to kind of get familiar with the content before I was going to get tested on it. So I know a lot of you are probably getting ready to go to trade school. Um, I went last year between March and April. So this was one of the classes that I was really nervous about because I had never, he gave this to me and I never opened it up. <laughs> Um, but it's very simple. It's really not that intimidating. I know it's huge, but it's really not that bad once you have the skills to get through the content and you know where to find it. So I'm going to teach you guys all the skills that I use to pass my class with flying colors. I was really proud of myself. Um, for some context, I did go to university. I have a degree in public health and then I had a postgraduate certificate in research. So electrical is kind of a second career to, for me, but I think those skills that I learned in university really helped for this. So I'm going to teach you guys what I did to pass all my tests. I'm going to tell you about what the classes and each class is really like. Um, and if I find any material from trade school that was on my laptop, I'm going to link it in the description below. Um, don't forget to check the description. I have a couple codes for some money off of some products. So check that out and uh, let's get into it. So first off, what is the class like? The class is going to basically just walk you through the material in each section. So each class, you're gonna go through a different section. Um, they pretty much just, you get familiar with the actual content. They don't really teach you how to, they don't teach you how to memorize the material and you're not supposed to memorize the book. There's no way you're gonna, you're never gonna memorize all of this and all the tables and all the diagrams and all the rules. It's just not gonna happen unless you're a genius. I'm not a genius, so I needed to learn some tricks. So what's in the actual code book? So because I don't have the updated one, I don't know how many sections exactly, but it's somewhere between 60 and 70 sections, um, but it's always even number. So 60 or 70 is really only 30 to 40. You're also gonna have your tables uh, and your diagrams. When you first open it up, you're gonna have the table of contents, which is pretty basic, kind of looks like that. Walks you through what is where and the page numbers. After that, you're gonna have section zero, which is object scope and definitions. Um, this is a section that gets overlooked all the time, but it really is important when it comes to some of the tests that you're gonna have. Um, it's gonna, so I got a few questions about what um, defines a qualified person or a trained person, a competent person to be doing the work. It also speaks to who can do this type of work, um, where you can do this type of work. And then all of the definitions are in alphabetical order. Um, if you're reading a question and you don't know what it's asking for, what I did was look for a keyword within the question and then try to look that keyword up in the def in the definitions. So if it mentioned, for example, for example, if it meant mentioned ground fault uh, protection, I would go to the definitions. Um, and sometimes in the definitions, it'll also tell you which appendix you can refer to. You always want to check the definition, check the section that it's relevant to, and then also check any mentioned appendix appendixes, um, diagrams, tables, all of that. Now for some context, some of the definitions and some of the codes are going to have a triangle beside it. Um, if you get any questions related to whether a code has changed, if it's been updated, if it's new, that usually that's usually how it's uh, defined by and that's how it's indicated. So like I said, each class, you're usually gonna go through one section, one or two sections. I would say the first 20 sections, uh, there's usually a class dedicated to it or the first, it's in pairs. And then the last chunk um, usually has between five and 10 sections, just because when you're in level one trade school, they don't wanna overwhelm you. So you kind of go through the basics that you need to know. Okay, now we're gonna go through, now that you know what's in the code book, we're gonna go through exactly what I did to pass my test, um, to find answers quickly, to find codes quickly, to find definitions and tables quickly. Um, because you only have a certain amount of time, you're probably gonna only have an hour for like 30 to 40 questions. So what I would start off by doing is using sticky notes to bookmark each section. So for each sticky note, I would usually cut them in half so you can 
line them on the top of the book here and you don't want them overlapping because you're going to want to see each one. This is really important because when you get to that final test, you're still going to be able to see all the sections. It'll be an easy way to pick them out and get to that section quickly. So I would bookmark the sections in the order of your classes. So if you went through sections zero to two in your first class, that's where I would bookmark it. Or not bookmark it, sticky note it. Put a sticky note. Um, you're going to want to start from up here. This is where I labeled all my sections. So when I went to trade school, because I'm in the union, I didn't actually purchase my books. I had to borrow them, which is why I use sticky notes because I couldn't actually write within the book. Uh, you couldn't ruin it. <laughs> use sticky notes up here uh, to label all your sections um, and don't just label them zero to 20. You're gonna wanna label them like section zero, scope and definition, section two, whatever it might be. And then along the side, as we're going through classes, there were a lot of tables that we used often, um, especially for some calculations, uh, just simple rules. Uh, yeah, so there's tables and diagrams within here. This is the, I use this vertical axis to label all those tables, diagrams, um, and appendixes. And again, like if you're labeling tables here, like I did, um, make sure you label exactly what table it is, or just, you don't even, because obviously you don't have a lot of room on the sticky note, so just put like a key word that you're going to remember it by and that you'll be able to flip too quickly. Um, something else I did was I put sticky notes within the actual, I put sticky notes within the actual book. Um, not on every page, but mostly on topics or uh, codes, rules that we had questions in class on or that we had questions in our quizzes on because it, the teacher was pretty transparent in telling us what exactly was going to be on the test. Um, it was pr pretty much a recap of all our quizzes and assignments, so I always made sure to put some sticky notes within um, specific codes just so that, and again, I would just pick a keyword you can write um, even like sometimes I wrote the answer, even though I didn't know that was going to be an actual question. I just wrote the answer and re and referral to one of the codes. Um, when you are write writing answers down, please make sure that, so for example, um, there are sections, subsections, sub subsections, like there's, for example, this one's scope, it's 20-000, and then you have section one, two, three, four, and within section one, you have A, B, C, D, and. So when you are writing the answer down to the question, make sure you indicate exactly what code number, what section, what subsection. Um, it even incorporates some Roman numerals, so you really wanna get down to the nitty gritty so you get all the points for it. Um, a lot of suggestions, suggestions that I had from people that I knew or people that I showed on TikTok, um, they recommended you get the clear sticky notes if you don't own your book. Um, this will allow you to kind of highlight without highlighting and then you don't have to write anything down unless you need to write some sort of note down. If you do own your book, I do recommend just highlighting. Um, usually every code that you go through in your classes, they are pretty relevant. They're not just some little code that you're never going to look up again. So I do recommend just highlighting and maybe writing in the margin um, your notes or you could use a sticky note for that. So when it comes to studying for your test, um, I think my number one piece of advice would just be getting familiar with each section. Um, know what each section is referring to and talking about. You don't have to memorize each code word for word. And you don't have to remember how many codes or what codes are where. You really just need to understand and know how to relate the question and what it's asking to exactly what part of the code book and section it's referring to. My piece of advice when you're writing your test is answer all the questions that you know first because you need as many points as you can get and then afterwards go back if you're having trouble to the question to those questions. So some advice if you are having trouble on questions, I would highly recommend going to the index first. Like I said, this book is pretty rough, but just like any book, it has an index. Kind of looks like this. Uh, yeah, so it kind of looks like that. So beside each um, topic in the index, it's broken down into like a general term. So for example, luminaires. Um, and then within luminaires, you have grounding of, hazardous locations, outdoors, raceways, recess. So when I was having trouble with questions, I would find the general topic of the question. So if it was luminaires, I would look in that section under L. And then I would try to relate the question to any of these subtopics. So if it was referring to, let's say, recessed luminaires, I would find that within the index um, under luminaires. 
and then it actually tells you exactly what part of the code book so it says it's section 30 3900 to 3912 so that kind of gives you a good starting point and where to go to look quickly so instead of flipping through all 600 pages of this you only have to flip through a couple pages now and you should be able to find it relatively quickly especially if you have some sticky notes that refer to questions that you already had in the class you should be able to find it easily this way um another thing i noticed is let's say you look through the index and you go to the page and you can't find what you're looking for uh odds are it might be within an appendix or tape. within that code it'll tell you what appendix to go to what diagram to go to and then from there you'll be able to either calculate or give the answer. Something else that was really helpful for me was I had certain uh, formulas. We did get a formula sheet, but I also had some formulas written down on a sticky note that pertained to certain codes or it pertained to certain tables. That way, all I had to do was look up the code or look up the table. I didn't have to look up the um, calculation as well. It's kind of all there and it just saves you a lot of time. Something else that I really recommend you doing is understand how to read the tables. This is gonna save you a lot of time. If you have questions, just ask them in class and get it clarified because a lot of the questions did refer to the tables. Some other tricky questions that I had really only referred to the section zero, which was the scope, which is kind of, it's overlooked quite a bit, but I'll give you an example of a question that was asked that it took me forever to find and it was so silly that it took me forever to find because it was right in front of your face. So for example, one of the questions spoke to railway communications and it was like a true or false question whether you're allowed to use this code book for railway communications and it is actually in section zero and I couldn't find it for the life of me. It's just don't overthink it. I think if you're well prepared, you have your sticky notes, you understand what each section is speaking to and you know kind of where material is especially with the tables, diagrams, the appendixes. So just to recap, um, for you to be successful in this class, make sure you know all the sections, make sure you understand what each one speaks to, make sure you have all the sections um, sticky noted and written with a basic keyword, make sure you have all your tables and important appendixes labeled, make sure you have your diagrams labeled or sticky noted. But that's it for me. Good luck to everyone going to trade school this year. Um, I wish you guys all the best. It's super easy. Don't freak out. For someone who doesn't have electrical background, like I said, I just went to university. This was a second career. It really wasn't that bad. I think you guys will find code pretty easy. And yeah, until next time. Um, again, don't forget to check the description because I'll have some stuff linked there for you guys to hopefully help you. Thank you again for your support, guys. I've had a lot of um, people commenting and I've had a lot of subscribers recently, which makes me super happy and excited I really appreciate all the support from you guys and all the content recommendations I feel like everyone and their brother are showing just how to change a switch how to change a plug So of course this channel is going to be about electrical things and all that kind of stuff, but I was thinking of showing um, some other type of vlog videos I have a lot of exciting things coming up this year that I think would be fun to show with my mom passing it's kind of it's kind of triggered the fact that i don't take a lot of photos i don't take a lot of videos and just i really want to have certain things in my life documented not just for myself but it would be cool to have it on here for other people to see i have a lot of exciting things this year i'm getting married my sister's getting married so that means double the bridal showers double the bachelorette parties uh i'm getting married we have a couple i don't know if you guys saw in my previous video um a caged car so my fiance races, I grew up going to the track here in Ontario because um, my dad raced stock car racing. It's a lot of fun. If you guys haven't been to a short track or a dirt track, I highly recommend. A good one to go if you haven't been before is probably Delaware. It's in London, Ontario, or just outside of London, sorry. Um, what other ones are good? Oshweekin is always a good time. That's a dirt track. Uh, we follow a series called APC series uh, or the Quick Quick series. There's a ton of racing series that are so much fun to watch that's usually our go-to for summer Saturday nights but I really wanted to show some of those trips we have planned uh, we're gonna go up north to a new track we've never been before but like I said with my mom passing it's kind of it's triggered a lot of thoughts for me um, one being it's how to make her proud and she was just someone who lived her life to the fullest she didn't care who was watching she would dance sing and just really lived life like no one was watching so I think that's my goal for 2023 I'm trying my best to get more comfortable in front of the camera and especially in front of 
like other people while I do this, like go out in public or even like my fiance Kyle, I get a little like, eh, don't look at me. <laughs> but I'm gonna try my best to, to do more videos, to do different videos, but still do some electrical videos because, or mostly electrical videos. I just don't want to do the same thing that everyone else is doing. I'm trying to be different here. So I can't wait to show you guys and bring you guys along for the ride. So thanks again and I will see you guys soon.